term, which is specifically about the Career Pilot Pathway Planner, um, which I'm going to be taking you through tonight. Now, what this is tonight is an introduction to the Pathway Planner, an opportunity to, for you to see what it does and for you to decide whether it's something you want. And if you do want it, then you will come on a training session where we will help you set it up. And what that means is like making sure that all your groups can get access to it and um, setting up permissions so staff can see it. So that's a longer training session, which is much more of a hands on experience. So uh, that will be the next thing for you to get access. But let's get going on just doing the introduction. If at any time you want to ask me a question, then you can put something in chat. I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, or you can put your hand up and in the top bar, if you're not familiar with Teams, there's a little hand. Click on that and then I'll see your hands up and you can put your mic on and ask me a question. OK, so the Pathway Planner is a triage model and tool that will help you assess the guidance needs of your students so that you can actually provide guidance to meet their individual needs. And we developed this through a bid to the Korean and Enterprise Company nationally. We bid for money to develop this idea and it was a pathway of funding related to Gatsby 8, which is personal guidance, obviously, but also the Pathway Planner helps to cover Gatsby 3 because it's all about meeting individual needs. So I'm going to run through the model. I'm going to show you the data and reports the Pathway Planner generates and then at the end I'll talk about how you can get access and as I said anytime you want to ask a question just do. Okay so Career Pilot, I guess all of you are familiar with Career Pilot. This has been available across the southwest um, for many years now as a free offer provided by the universities in the southwest. So Career Pilot is four zones essentially. Everything really happens through the student zone, um, but there's also an advisor zone with lots of lesson plans and materials, the parent zone and the reporting zone where all our data is collated for you. So now the new offer from September will be that we also give you free access to the Pathway Planner. And today's training will help you get started with that. And if you wanted to try it out with some of your 10 students for the end of the year, that'd be fine. But mainly it's for year 11 and 12. Um, so what that's about, as I said, is tri triaging the guidance needs of your students. So you can use that data to provide guidance um, to meet their individual needs. It also, everything we do is all about helping you to meet Gatsby as well. And certainly the Pathway Planner will help you with Gatsby 8. So Career Pilot generally, I'm just going to give you a few overview slides of Career Pilot because I don't know how much you know about Career Pilot. Maybe you're all using it all the time, which would be great. But just to give you a few slides and then we'll drill down to the Pathway Planner. So Career Pilot is all about the student being at the centre and it's all about having different activities with different age groups that relate to the things they need to be thinking of or things they need to be doing in the context of careers. So year seven, it might just be learning about jobs. Uh, year nine, be about exploring options. So if you're the careers leader, you can have career path to the centre of your offer for students. Um, we've got other things in there, like our three-stage career process we try to teach to students. Um, there's five-week lessons you can use and all sorts of things that would help you deliver good quality careers. Also, then, if you've got this one resource, you know, your tutors can be using it, your PSHC staff, apologies for that, uh, parents, uh, we've got activities for subject teachers, and of course, the whole journey is leading towards personal guidance. So the more students have done from year seven, the more prepared they are for guidance anyway. Pathway Planner is um, usually coming in year 11 when they choose in post 16 and year 12 when they begin to choose post 18. You can use it right at the end of year 10 and that's why I say you might want to pilot it before the summer to see how it works with your students. Um, but mainly they need to be ready to start making the decision, which is why sometimes you know they need to be in year 11 for it to be an immediate decision for them. You'll understand that a bit more when we go through the training. Um, so Career Pilot, I'm sure you've all seen the homepage before, uh, so the key thing about Career Pilot is that you get your students registered and then they've got their own account on the site and that enables them to use all the career tools so they can personalise the things they're interested in, be adding them in here. Actually, can I just ask that everybody puts their mics off, we're just getting a bit of feedback. So if your mic is off and then you can put it on when you want to ask a question, Hopefully that's all right. Um, so the students are building their report, but 
also that is collating information for you in our reporting zone. So you could see by group or jobs they're interested in and various other things too. So also in the site, we have what we call our three stage process. What we're trying to do is teach students how they make a career decision so that they can use that approach throughout life. Start with you, you know, what are the particular things you're interested in? So we have activities to help them think about that. So we start with you, they're really sort of thinking about themselves, what motivates them, and we're kind of showing them where those motivations might lead. Explore your options is then a code drilling down to what's available and looking in detail and try to match that to where you are now, but where you want to be in the future. And I'm just going to show you the jobs bit because this is the most popular part of the site where they can search for a job, they can search by sector, start with their values, start with subjects. And I don't know if you've seen, we now have a green jobs entry as well. So that's another way they can get in. Um, they could do our job quiz or whatever. So then they could go through a sector, they could search for a keyword, like in this case, animal. They see all the sort of job profile tiles, click on any of those, they get lots of information, um, including lib market information, which is national. Entry requirements shows them what pathways they could take, even names of the apprenticeship they could do if they wanted to become an animal care worker in this instance. But there's also the LMI as well, how many people are currently working in this job by region. So that's quite a nice one to show, I find, you know, for students to see where the jobs might be so they know that they might have to go to London for certain jobs or there's not so many opportunities where they live. But there's also a live vacancy um, search by region. And even though they're not looking for jobs in year nine or whatever, they can still get the experience of looking and seeing what's available and get a feel for how jobs are presented. So then the third stage in our process is the planning next steps. So this is like they've got their report, they've got their skills map, they can do an ongoing action plan. I always try to get them to do a few action points because what we're trying to do is get them to kind of manage their career. And this one little thing they do is about them managing their career. And we get great feedback from students about how it really helps them to feel more confident about their future. Um, so the report I mentioned a few times for the students, they can look at it as a dashboard. So this is just a summary of the career tools they've done. Obviously, they need to have done them. They need to have tagged what they're interested in, and then they've got data here to look at. But they can also look at the full report, and if they've done all the career tools, it could be quite detailed. It'll have, you know, qualifications they're thinking of, job choices, subject choices, all useful information, especially if we do one to one guidance to see this before you do guidance with the students is really, really useful, we find. And that report moves up annually with the students and they can move it from one place to another. So if they are you know, out of a mainstream school, they can report their account from the mainstream school into your environment and then the other way as well or into a college, for example. Um, the other thing you can do is actually write, if you do, if you are a careers advisor and you're writing your report, you can write that straight onto the site and then it'll appear in the student's report. So it's available for them to see and any action points you might have agreed with them as well. So it's about everything being in one place as well. OK, now that was a quick whistle stop tour of Career Pilot. If anybody needs to know any more about the main part of the site, the four zones, we've got loads of webinars you can sign up for because this webinar is really just focused in on the pathway planner, which is what I'm going to do now. OK, um, OK, so we've got different versions uh, in schools. It'd be for year 11 and 12. There's also a college version as well, all schools here tonight. So when we put our bid into the Crazy Enterprise Company, we had to come up with an idea to meet Gatsby 8, which, as we know, is a guidance session before they're uh, 16 and another opportunity before they're 18. But we also had to show how our idea met what was called the criteria of effective guidance. So this comes from a careers and enterprise company research report, personal guidance, what works. And these are the sort of things, you know, it's integrated and what else is happening in the school. It's given in a nice space, hopefully, at an appropriate time. There's a preparation element for guidance and then there's a feedback after the effective, the interview is effective because it's delivered by somebody with a level six qualification um, and that's that level of professionalism. So these are all the things that we were trying to meet with our model. So the model is, we 
we did this in 2019. We piloted it in six schools and then we've offered it um, on a cost basis to other schools. It was £250 per annum, basically. And we offered that and 100 schools signed up. But what we're doing for the future is just building it into the career pilot model. So there's no additional charge for schools in the southwest region. Um, so, you know, it's a really good offer. So this is free, essentially. So the way the model works uh, is that there's a one hour lesson and in this lesson, which we've designed so you can use our lessons off the peg, we've got video recordings of the lessons, so you could just click the button and press play if you want to. It's a one hour lesson and we're going to make sure that in that lesson, everybody knows the next stage options. Now, you will have done all sorts of things on those options. Uh, choices, but in this session, I'm going to make sure all the kids in that room know the next stage options because that's going to be key. Because the next thing we're going to ask them to do is have a look on Career Pilot and explore the ones they're particularly interested in. But in the last 10 minutes of the lesson, we're going to ask them to complete the pathway planner, and that's going to say which options are you interested in. And then through a quiz, they will um, get what we call the readiness score. They get a red, amber, green that indicates how ready they are for the next pathway. I'll explain how that works in a minute. And what that does for you is create lots of data. Um, so in a sort of data report, you can see what pathways the students are interested in, but also how ready they are. Are they red? So they want, want to go on to higher education, but they're red. So they obviously haven't done or don't know the things they need to know. Having analysed that data, you can then book guidance according to the needs at three different levels. You can make all the bookings on the sites. You've got a record of all the things you've offered to that student. And then you'll be delivering that guidance. There's lots of ways you can actually um, summarise what that student wants to do after guidance. Um, so you can track really what their intentions are, but how ready they are for that pathway. So what you're hoping is they might have started being red or amber, but now through your interventions, they're getting to be green and amber. So you get them in a really good place to make a good progression move. There's a few other things you could do. You can create a report showing all the progression plans of a group, a really good one to share with tutors. You're all pushing in the same direction with students. Uh, another good thing to do is to offer a weekly drop in. And the value of that, which I'll explain as we go through, is you've got somewhere for the students to refer themselves after they've had guidance if they're still in a bit of a tiz or you've got somewhere for tutors to refer them to as well. You can also get tutors involved in the whole process by doing a follow up and they can refer their students after they've had to chat with them. It's literally a five minute conversation where they ask three questions. So more of that as we go through, but that's essentially the pathway planner model. OK. So to support that model, we've designed sessions. We've got a session for year 11, a session for year 12. Don't have to use our stuff, but a lot of people do. Uh, we've also got our video, which maybe you've seen before. It's an animation of why careers is important and how to get ready for your future career. And in that, we pick out four things like know yourself, do stuff to build your CV and your skills, know all your options and use your supporters. And essentially in these presentations, we can try to show them how they can do that, what they can do on career pilot, what they could be doing in their own lives. So in terms of delivering the pathway plan, I talked about the one lesson and there's a few different ways to do it. Number one is you have to get your students registered and you have to do that at a different time from doing the pathway planner lesson. And that's because they have to be in the system so you can allocate the pathway planner to them. So getting all your students in the system is like number one. Then you're going to deliver this one hour lesson. So you could just deliver their lesson, got the presentation for it. And at the end of the lesson, they're going to complete the pathway planner. You'll get all that data. But also we have our five week career lessons. Um, I don't know if you've seen these. I could give you a quick look later. But there's five lessons for every year group. So the year 11 ones, um, the way it would work if you were delivering all five is lesson one is when we would discuss the options generally. Lesson two, three and four would be drilling down and helping them learn about the different pathways. And lesson five is where they would complete the pathway planner. And if you can afford the time for the five lessons, then by the time you do the pathway planner, they have understood a lot more by the pathways and hopefully you won't end up with so many red students. But that's an option and we know not everybody can offer five lessons. So you could do one lesson or five lessons or cherry pick. 
OK, so a speed lesson, just so you get a feel of the lesson. So this is one for year 12. Um, so it'll show the different pathways. It'll show the point of decision we're discussing in the session. So this is post 18. So we're talking about moving from level two to three or three to four. And we're talking about the different options. And then for each of the options, we'll give them a few headline bits of information, something about apprenticeships, how you find out more, but key things like, you know, you might have to start at a lower level or go sideways. It's not always possible to go up because you might not have the technical knowledge. So just key bits of information about the different next stage pathways. Then they would have some time on career pilot and they will explore the things they want to explore and in the presentation they'll say how long they've got so that's an instruction for the teacher but also for the students and then as i said the last 10 minutes they come back and uh, it would be explained to them they're going to do this pathway planner and this is an opportunity for them to indicate which pathways they're interested in everything can be changed and also to see how ready they are for that pathway so you will have switched this on and the training that I talked about will tell you how to do that. Uh, the pathway planner will be here in the career tools. And this is the post 18 version, so it'll show the post 18 pathways. And this is where they can say I'm definite, I'm considering, I'm not doing. And they have to have an answer for every line. Then they save that and start the quiz. So they do the quiz on any pathway they said they're definite or considering. So the quiz is now asking them how ready they are really for that particular pathway. So this is about university level study because I'm looking at the post 18 version and this student is considering that. So we're going to say, you know, have you discussed your interest in university with your parents? Do you know what course subject you want to do? Do you know how much it's going to cost you to do it? Are you on target with all your subjects? Now, behind the scenes, we've given these answers a grading. Some are more red flag than others. Some are fairly neutral. So the students don't see the scoring, but what they get is essentially a readiness score, a red, amber, green score. So this shows them quite visually that, you know, there's things that they need to do additionally in order to be ready for that pathway. But what it does for you is give you all that data so you can intervene and provide them with some of those things that might support them making a good progression. So they're all going to get guidance, which of course is Gatsby 8. Now in our pilot, the way we did for our pilot was if they were green, that meant they were definite about something and they were green, so they knew a lot about it, then they would get 20 minute check of their plan. But we also had this drop in, which is brilliant because if after the 20 minutes you thought, oh gosh, they need a bit more time, you could get them to drop in. So the drop in was a great mop up. 30 minutes for amber and then 60 minutes if they were uh, red. So we, first of all, it went by the definite pathway. So they had to be definite and then we would allocate 20, 30 or 60 minutes. Now every school has to flex that. You're not all able to offer that, but that's the way it kind of works and you'd have to decide for yourself what your students would get. Um, students can look at a timeline, which I'm going to show you in a minute. This shows them where they are, uh, when. They could also, you can, um, if you've got the drop in, um, you do the first session, you book it all up, you run the guidance, and if they're in a panic a few weeks later, they can request guidance through the system. So you could teach them to do that. They could request e-guidance, which is where they just ask you a question, or they can request guidance, and then you could invite them to a drop-in. So that's why the drop-in is a really good sort of mop-up. OK, and I mentioned the drop in specifically here, because if even if it's just one lunchtime a week, it's where the students who needs more help can go to because they know it exists. It's also where a tutor can refer a student to as well. But also you might find there's students with a common element of issue, like it might be that you've got six students who don't know about the finance for higher education. So the drop in is a great place to say, OK, you six, come and see me, I'm going to run through finance for university. So you can look at the answers that people give and actually rationalise how you're going to provide that information if there's multiple students with the same issue. OK, everybody happy so far? Anybody want to ask me a question before we move to the other side of the system? All OK, cool. 
Uh, OK, so we, that was the student bit. It's quite easy for them to do, but it generates a lot of information. What's key is when you deliver that pathway planner session, because if you do it too early, they're not ready to commit to a pathway um, or they'll commit to a pathway, but then you know they might be read. They might be read for that pathway because they can't answer the questions. So timing is a key, key thing in terms of when you deliver the pathway planner. What it could also show you, this is what we found through our pilot, is where the gaps are in your provision. So an example from one of our schools was they thought all the students were sorted for gap year. You know, they understood what a gap year was, they had 12 students, but they found they had a lot of red for gap year and they were surprised by that. But what it enabled them to see is they needed to put a session on for students about gap years because they obviously didn't understand it. And then they did that and then obviously they didn't have reds. So you can see, you know, it might be a gap in your apprenticeships or whatever. Uh, hold on, I've got a feeling somebody's trying to get in. Yeah. Hi Javid, can you hear me okay? Hi Javid, do you want to take your mic off and just let me know you can hear or put something in chat? I'll carry on, but hopefully you can hear me. So Javid, if you, you just join in, we've talked about what it's like for the students and how that's used, but we're looking now at the back end. So having done it with the students, this is what you see from the back end of the system. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, you'll need access to our reporting zone. So if you haven't done that already, um, you need to get a data sharing agreement with us, um, signed off for somebody in the senior leadership team, and then we can give you access to this back end. So looking at my data at the moment, St. Matthias, you haven't got access. So if you want me to arrange for a data sharing agreement to be sent to you, then let me know. Just put it in chat or email me or our helpline separately. Okay. OK, so this is the reporting zone area and uh, the orange bit is all about your users and where you would set up staff. Uh, the reports are from the main part of career pilots. So if you want to know what job sectors kids are interested in, you can look by group or by the individual student. But the bit we're looking at tonight is the pink bit, which is about the pathway planner. So this is where you're going to see your results of bookings. OK. So what you'll get by any group that you've set up in the pathway planner, so it could be the whole year 11 or it could be a tutor group, then you will see a dashboard of their pathway planner results. So in this example, they didn't do it in year 11, um, they've done it post 16. So now quite quickly, I can see what pathways students are considering, but also see how ready they are for that particular pathway. I can also tag the students, so I, I would do this when they registered and go into their accounts and tag anybody who's got uh, an additional need, pupil premium, education, health and care plan, and then a little icon appears. And the advantage of that is then when I'm looking at the dashboard, I know that student might need additional support. So I'm going to take that into account when I allocate the guidance they get. There's various things you could do against the individual, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, you can set up bookings in the systems or recorded. When you've got bookings, uh, if they're pink, um, they come in up. If they're green, they're done. So you can, oh, that, oh, I said that the wrong way around. <laughs> I might have done actually. Yeah, sorry, I think if they're pink, they're done. And if they're green, they're sort of coming up. So you can see at a glance really what's going on with that group. So the way we allocate guidance is, as I said, we always start with a definite pathway. Um, Oh, no, I'm going to go back there. So that top student, sample 3002, they, if I looked at their results, I think, oh, well, they consider an apprenticeship, so they're red, they're considering university, they're amber, they're considering employment, they're amber, so they haven't got a definite pathway. Um, so I think I would give them the middle level of guidance, which in our pilot was 30 minutes, to just tease out what's going on there. And I've still got my drop in if I want them to come back for more. Sample 3003, they definite about apprenticeships, they're red for that. So I'd be a bit concerned about that particular person. So I would probably give them the maximum guidance, 60 minutes um, in our pilot, because they obviously you know, need to have that support if they're definite about apprenticeships. Sorry, what I should have said in the top one, because they've got a tag as an additional need, I probably would give them the longest guidance anyway, because I would want to see, you know, 
what's going on in terms of their pathway choices, but what support they might need. So you go through the list doing that and then you can allocate the guidance and in the actions is where you can book everything, which I'm going to show you in a minute. OK, um, and if you come to our training, we'll go through this in a lot more detail. OK, so the other things you can do against the individual, you can see they've answers. So that's useful. As I said, if you look at multiple answers, you might find there's a common element, you know, that um, students not really sure about apprenticeships. You could get a few of them together and run through that specifically. You can view their timeline, which I'm going to show you as you go through, but you can also book their guidance right onto the system. The progression follow up is like a one liner the advisor would write as the students leave their room, if you like. So they come in with all sorts of things. They might be going out with something different. So this is a record of that. If you choose to get your tutors to follow up, they can do it straight onto the site. And when the advisor writes their report, it's currently um, we change the title now to advisor report, then they could do it straight from here. So I'm just going to show you some of those things. OK, so bookings are dead easy. Uh, so I've looked at the data. I think that students needs my middle level of guidance. I put in what I call in my school. Come see Miss Lewis in room 503 for a career session. I put in the date. I put in the time and then I identify what type of guidance I'm offering. So we don't say minutes here. But for my records, I can say it's long, medium check in. I've given it because they've dropped in. They've self referred. I can record that. If a tutor refers them, I can do that. If they ask me any guidance question or if a parents referred them. So I can choose what sort of guidance I'm going to, to offer to that student. When you've got lots of bookings, there's another thing you could do called manage bookings, and this is where you can see all your bookings. You can sort them alphabetically by date, by type. Um, another thing you could do is put did not attend. Um, so if they didn't turn up, then that will show on their timeline as well. Um, so you could show that you offered something, they weren't able to come, and then obviously you can offer again. Um, but it also is there for the students to see, which I think is good too. You could download all these reports, so I could download, you know, all my planned sessions and filter them and put them into date order or whatever I wanted to, or I could allocate a, a workload uh, to a, a guidance advisor who's coming in externally. And then if I'm the careers advisor, I don't know if any of you are the qualified careers advisors, um, but I find this very useful when I'm doing my guidance. I still do some guidance, um, you know, because before I meet the students, I go and look at all this data, got all the career pilot information. I know what pathways they're interested in, know how ready they are. And then during the guidance, I use all the career pilot tools to find out more about them, help them explore their options, set actions. And then after, I can write my little one liner report, which could be shared with tutors and anybody else, head of year, whoever. I can write my agreed action straight onto the site and my full report. And the other thing I would get my advisor to do is get the students to log on to Career Pilot and edit their responses. So they're updating their pathway planner. So they might be in red and now they might be amber. And that's your evidence base, really, to show the impact of your intervention. So here we go. As a careers uh, advisor, I've got all this information from their report from the pathway planner. So that really helps me um, you know, get that information. And one of our pilot schools said uh, that they've been doing guidance for years and they couldn't believe how much more efficient everything was because they, they knew the students knew the options because of that one hour session. Um, so they didn't have to keep repeating 220 times to the whole year 11 what their options were that bit was done they could really focus in on helping them with the next stage of things students needed to have support with so then during guidance uh, you know there's all the activities in career pilot which helps the guidance process and then after guidance as they leave your room as a guidance advisor you can do the progression follow-up it's like what i call the one-liner so they came in with three ideas. They're going out with two. So I could put, yeah, you know, they're definitely about university level study. I can write a little bit more like what subjects they're interested in. And there's a little drop down arrow here where I could put their firm, lightly, borderline to get the grades. 
and then I could put a second pathway if they're thinking about something else. And that report could be shared with tutors. So it'd be a really great way of actually integrating what you're doing in careers with other people who might be able to support their students' journey. The students don't see this, by the way, it's just there um, really for the staff end. And as I said, you can write your actions and your report straight onto the site just by clicking that button, advisor report. And you can put in any actions, they're very straightforward to do. And then you can write what's called new comment. And for the students, any actions you agree with them will appear here. And anything you write will appear against their main report here. And when you write in your report, oh, sorry, um, you can do nice things, which on the training we'll go through is how you write, um, you could do an internal link to any content in Career Pilot. So you can make your report quite interactive because instead of writing a big long bit about apprenticeships, you can put click here to find out about apprenticeships or do this, do that, and it will go to the bit of Career Pilot they need to explore further. OK, so I mentioned the timeline a few times. So what this is, the students can see this and you can as well. and it's a kind of record of what they're doing on the pathway planner, but how they move their journey on towards um, being in a good place to make that progression. So in this example, on the 28th of November, this person was two reds in number. Then somebody looked at that and gave them a long careers guidance session on the 24th of Feb. They got them to go back on to Career Palette, edit their responses on the Pathway Planner, and now they've got two pathways rather than three, and they're green in amber. So it's a good visual record. And you could put in there where they dropped in, they asked you an e-question, where their parents referred them. You know, everything is kind of visually recorded there. But also the great thing is you begin to see they're moving towards being green in amber, which is what you want before before they have their results and have to make that progression move. OK, um, one of the things you can also do, I've talked about how you get the careers advisor to look at the information uh, and use make best use of the site. But um, in our pilot two, we actually got tutors involved. Uh, so four weeks after the guidance took place, a tutor, it doesn't have to be a tutor, it could be somebody else, would just spend five minutes asking three questions to the two T's um, just to see if they were still on track. And if they're worried, they could actually refer them back into guidance and that drop in I mentioned earlier. OK, so the three questions were, you know, are you clear about which pathways? How are you getting on with your actions? Do you feel you have the information you need to move on? So it wasn't, you know, if they miss out on an action, we weren't suggesting they were referred for guidance. But if they were still wor if they're worried or things had changed, then that's a good point of referral. And they could click on the system to say, you know, this person needs to be seen again. And then whoever's managing that end of the bookings could actually get them along for a drop in. So it's like a real mop up of everybody. I think it's like Gatsby 8 plus in a way because it gives them the support they need. Um, I talked about the tutors. If they do, uh, if you are involved in the tutors, they can have a login to the, um, area, the student area as well for their particular group. They can click tutor follow up and then say, yes, I've done it. Yes or no, they need to be referred. And then for whoever's looking at all this data, you can see the progression follow up that I mentioned a few times, my, the one liner. So on this now by group, it says what they're thinking of, but it'll also show if the tutors have done a follow up. And this is where you could see whether you need to see somebody again. Right, I'm almost at the end. <laughs> um, I've done a lot of talking. I'm very happy to take any questions. I um, mean, our pilot was you know, very successful, got brilliant feedback from the six schools who used the Pathway Planner. Um, you know, especially help them to think strategically about careers guidance, but also to pick up on students. They were surprised, needed support, like they're called the grey students who you think are OK, but then you think, oh, gosh, maybe they're not so OK. Um, so. I've got load oodles of this stuff if you want to say any more about it. So I'll take a bit of a pause and see if anybody wants to ask me a question. Uh, we're a small group, so I'm very happy for you to turn your mic on. Uh, Amy, go for it. Hiya. Um, Hi. Yeah, thanks for that. That's really interesting. Um, I had a couple of questions. Yep. So um, one was, you know, when you were saying about how you can kind of mark them if they've got you know, like people premium or SCN. 
Is there any way that that is able to be kind of pulled in from a, a spreadsheet or does that have to be done individually? It has to be done individually. And the reason for that is that the way Career Pilot operates is a bit different from some other systems in that the students own their own accounts. So the students register and they own their account till they're 20. So they manage their account and then they really give you access to it while they're with you, but they could port it elsewhere. So it doesn't link to your management system. Mm -hmm. um because it's kind of their ownership but you can't you know you'd have to do it individually yeah the others okay. um and then the other one was you know you kind of showed us that you could like download that report that you know said a303 had a guidance interview if they've you know had more than one action would i see multiple kind of students in that action or would it kind of tally into uh, extra columns does that kind of make sense so are you talking by student, like what interventions you offer to that student? Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. 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 So if um, like if I'm Sue Lewis and I'm in year nine and I've had three, then it shows Sue Lewis three times and put the dates that I had those interventions and what they were like. Were they small? You know, were they a long one or a drop in or knee guidance one? OK, cool. So you will see everything that you do as long as you record it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, super. Uh, any other questions? Um, not from me, I guess. And that, like, the only thing I guess would be like, do we have access to this to kind of like have just a like a play around in like a test kind of way? We don't actually on career on um, pa the pathway planner. We don't have like a play area on it. We do on career pilot, but not on on the pathway planner. I mean, this presentation will be made available to you. So if you wanted to show it to other people, you could do that. But there's no mm -hmm. um there's no like test login or anything. Okay. Okay. So, so Julie, you've got your hand up. Do you want to put your mic on and ask a question? Yeah, if we if I child this with our year tens this academic year, would it set me up ready for September so that when they moved into year eleven? Yeah, they so the way it would work if you tried out with your year tens, um, then the system would automatically move them into year eleven next year. OK, but if you call if you divide them into a tutor group, say you had you know, two tutor groups in your mm. Uh, 10 then and you call them like you know uh, 10 SL pathway planner or whatever then all you need to do is change the text on that to 11 SL because the system doesn't know if you've typed it in yourself what you should change it to but all year 10 students will automatically go to be year 11, 11 but any group names would have to be adjusted by you so then what would happen next year is your students wouldn't do the pathway planner all over again they would go in and edit their responses so they kind of review what they said okay so if yeah. they said I, I'm yeah, I was, I'm considering an apprenticeship in year 10 and next year they definite, they would just switch it to definite. Or if they if they said, I don't know anything about the grades and now they do, they just switch it to a yes. So they kind of review in it. So once you've done it once from then on in your review, as you change and learn more about your pathways. OK, thank you. Anything else? OK, just the last few slides. Um, OK, so. So as I said at the beginning, tonight is just an introduction. Um, and then the next thing, if you want to have access to it, is that you sign up for the training. It is like compulsory to have the training before we will switch it on for you. Mm. And that's because, you know, there's a bit of setup with groups and things. We want to make sure everybody knows what they're doing and it's available properly for your students. It's about two hours, maybe a bit less. Um, we also offer lots of other things like refresher sessions. If you're not sure how to set up a group, we offer little things. We've got little videos of how to do this, that and the other. But we do expect people to come on the training. Um, what you'll get then is all, get all the lesson plans that you can use with your students and the five career lessons I mentioned. Um, we'll switch the pathway planner on for you and then you'll be able to see all those reports. As I said, you will need a data sharing agreement in order to be able to get access to all this data, but also you become part of a user group. So once a year we ask people for ideas about how the system should be developed. So you'll be part of that as well. And uh, we'll go through all that so you all get free access. Um, we probably know already that we have a big advisor zone and if you've got access to 
if you, if you complete data chain agreement, you will have an admin password and that will give you access to all the resources in this area as well. So it's well worth doing. So there's a whole tile about the pathway planner. It's one about, you know, how careers, uh, credit card maps to Gatsby. There's how to use the reporting zone. There's a lot, you know, there's loads of information in here, including those five career lessons I mentioned for every year group mapped to the CDI framework. Um, and then there's also little fun activities to do in tutor time that don't require a computer. We've got a set for key stage three and key stage four. There's loads of poster packs you can use, little activities. There's activities for subject teachers. So these are all the other things you get when you mm. actually become a full member and that we've got a data sharing agreement you get your admin password you can get access to reporting zone all these activities in the advisor zone and also the pathway planner now as well okay so if you want to go to the next level uh, what will happen is probably tomorrow joe on the helpline will send you a follow-up to today's session and in that she'll give you a link so you can sign up if you want to go on to the next level and have training we've got various options before the summer and there will be some after as well and just bear in mind it's about two hours is online um but that would be the full setup then you'll know what you're doing Teresa, do you want to ask a question very quickly Sue. if um if i've forgotten my admin password ask joe on the helpline and she'll help you out with that as well Great, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Joe's your first point of contact for all that. She's great at yeah. sorting out all those things. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, and we do loads of other training too. So if you go onto our uh, advisor zone, uh, you don't need a password to access this bit. Free training. We'll, you know, do some uh, in-school stuff with your staff if you need that. But there's lots of webinars. These, this is our program to the summer, but there'll be lots of other things from September, which are about the main part of Career Pilot. So if you want to make best use of that, um, there's lots of webinars to do with that. Um, and there's the helpline information, which is always worth having. Anything else? OK, well, thank you so much for coming along. I hope it was useful and um, do follow up by having the training if that is something you want to um, pursue. And uh, otherwise, just get in touch with Joe on the helpline is probably your, your best person for anything because uh, she's more available than I am. So, OK, yeah. thank you very much, Sue. That okay. was great. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Sue, just before um, I go, I've seen on our oh, she's gone. Never mind. 